joy, peace, tranquility, vibrancy, and wellness. Isn't this what you want instead of constant stress? That's what host Rochelle Lawson is going to help you with on Blissful Living. There are many ways to reduce stress, some you may not even know about. Doesn't a little peace and tranquility sound like just what you've been looking for? Relax for a few minutes with Rochelle. She's the queen of feeling fabulous. Hello, everyone, and welcome to your hour of Blissful Living. I am Rochelle Lawson, the queen of feeling fabulous, your host. And today we're going to dive into something very special. My guest today comes to us with a ton of credibility. And I just want to tell you um, about her, a little bit about her, because you're going to be just blown away, knocked off your stock, so to speak. My guest is Dr. Kathy Groover, and she is the host of a national TV show based on her first book, The Alternative Medicine Cabinet. She's earned her Ph.D. in natural health, and she was featured on Lifetime's television, The Balancing Act, in 2011, speaking about natural health and how she just authored her second book entitled Mind Body Therapies for the Body Workers. She is just full of information about the mind-body connection and mind-body medicine, and she has um, gone on and got a, an advanced degree, Ph.D., um, in this arena. Now, she's appeared on numerous shows, and she's done over 50 educational lectures around the country. So it is my pleasure to bring this high-caliber guest to the show today. She also is a recent winner of NABO, the National Association of Women Business Owners. Spirit of Entrepreneurship Award, and I, I'm I'm really familiar with NABO because I was a past president of NABO, um, so that is a phenomenal achievement to accomplish, especially in the area of healing, health, and wellness. And so, without further ado, let me just say welcome to the show, Dr. Kathy Gruber. It is a pleasure to have you here and share you with the listeners. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. Well, yes, we are just thrilled for you to disseminate your knowledge um, that you've acquired over these years, especially the stuff you've put into your books, um, how we can have a better life and live better. And I know that you you have a background in massage and um, in healing in that arena because, you know, as you know, what what we think in our mind sometimes is exhibited in our bodies. So tell us a little bit about you know, massage and healing and how you got started in, in that area. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my background started in massage. Actually, I started out as an actor, um, which has nothing to do at all with healing, but I have found that that has come full cycle back into my life when I'm doing my lectures and anytime I'm on the radio, uh, I realize all that healing, ba- uh, all that um, acting background and all the healing background has combined and it's made me exactly who I am for this right moment right now, which I just find amazing when we question things in the universe. Uh, I have to say, it always works out. It always puts you right where you're supposed to be, which which always blows my mind. Um, but I started doing massage really young. I would sit behind my dad on long car trips, and I'd rub his neck so he didn't get a headache. And I found that I always had this inclination to put my hands on people to help them feel better. And I think we all do that to a certain extent. You know, if we hit our knee or if we stub a toe, what's the first thing we do is we reach down with our hands to make that feel better. And moms do that to comfort their kids. Um, It's a natural thing we want to do to use loving touch to make people feel better and express our emotions towards them. And I see that really lacking in in our society. You know, um, other countries are so much more not cuddly necessarily, but, you know, in Europe, most people greet with, with kisses on the cheeks or hugs, and we have this, you know, very stand-up handshake here in this in this country that's considered appropriate for that type of meeting, and especially in schools. Um, I know a lot of schools are completely no-touch schools where you're not allowed to put your hands on the kids at all, so if they do a good job, you can't give them a hug, or if they feel sad, you can't, you know, cuddle with them or help them if they've fallen, or, you know, it's becoming this very swing the opposite direction, and I I understand we have a problem with predators and things like that, but we can't swing to the opposite extreme where we're not even allowed to cuddle with the children and and the people around us. I think it's it's getting really dangerous. (laughs) So anytime you can incorporate massage into your life and that type of healing touch, I think that's going to be hugely beneficial. There's no side effects. It feels good. um, And that's how I started my career was in massage, um, and I've, I've branched it from there. 
uh, to what I'm doing now, which is so many other things as well as the massage. But it's it's always a huge part of my life. And the times I've tried to stop massaging people as a career, I find myself just aching to get my hands on someone to help them because I can tell where they're hurting and I want to I want to help them fix that. So tell me. <clears throat> You know, I know that touch plays a really important part in the healing process, and I'm sure, you know, people out there listening have experienced the massage and, you know, have woke up or, you know, wake in from their massage session feeling in this, you know, awesome state of bliss. Mm -hmm. Can you just tell the listeners a little bit more about what, why you think that the, the act of touch um, is so important with regards to you know, our our own internal healing from whatever may be, you know, bothering us, whether it's emotional, physical, mental, um, the act of touch does release things that allow us to break through some of those challenges that we have. Can you just touch on that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it does a lot of things just physiologically, first of all. I mean, it's, it's, it relaxes our muscles, which is so important. We're surrounded by stress and we have this huge stress response and using massage as a stress buster is huge. Um, it also helps relax the muscles after sports and exertion, things like that. So it actually does increase blood flow. It pushes the toxins out of the muscles so that, you know, that burny feeling after we've done too much working out. Massage helps flush those chemicals out of the muscle. It moves the lymph through the body, which helps with the immune system. It slows our heart rate and our respiratory rate. It helps balance our blood pressure. And it invokes something called the relaxation response, which is the exact opposite to that stress response, that fight or flight response that we feel all the time that um, nervousness, that rush, that anxiety, that stress that we all are feeling, massage helps counteract that. Um, it also helps release, for anybody that's ever had a baby, you've probably heard the term oxytocin. Um, and if you're not progressing in labor fast enough, they'll give you something called pitocin, which is the chemical version of this natural chemical we make in our bodies. Massage helps produce oxytocin in the brain, which not only makes us feel good, it makes us feel loving. That's that bonding hormone. That's that empathetic hormone where we, we want to be nice and kind and loving to people around us. So massage has so many benefits. And again, it, it feels good. Um, and the other thing that's kind of cool is it gives you a chance to quiet your mind and really see what's happening in your body. And one of the things that I really stress is we have to know our own bodies. We have to know how we feel when we feel good and we have to know how we feel when we don't feel good. Um, and we walk into a doctor's office or, or an alternative health, prayer, health uh, care practitioner like myself and people say, fix me. But we're not cars. We actually <laughs> have a consciousness and we have more moving parts than cars. And so we have to take stock of our own bodies, take an inventory of what's happening inside us and be able to express that to other people. And sometimes we know our cars better. You know, if our car starts to make that funny noise, we can call our mechanic and say, oh, hey, Bill, you know, when I turn the steering wheel three degrees to the left going uphill, when it rains, it goes click, 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 click. Right. We can describe that. But the doctor will say what hurts and we kind of go, uh because we've not gone inside to see how we're feeling. And I think to me that's one of the most important parts of health is knowing yourself. Um, and if you don't know what you feel like when you're well, you can't describe what you feel like when you're not well. And that is one of the keys to healing is knowing how you feel. And massage helps with that. I, I agree with I would agree with all that you said. Um, and it really does. It, it really does release those feel-good hormones that allow us to – Basically, I want to say melt off some of that stress that we may be having mm -hmm. and really allow us to relax and helps to balance things out. And, you know, I practice, um, I'm an Ayurvedic health practitioner and, and Ayurveda mm -hmm. is all about being in balance. And when you're in balance, you're completely free of illness and disease, which is what we all strive for. So mm -hmm. if if massage is something that can help me to stay balanced, which I do, you know, I do all the time and, and do mm -hmm. for people, um, it's it's just like this wonderful gift that you can give to yourself and not really really have to dramatically change what you do in your life. You know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. And one of the things that, one of the misconceptions about natural health is I have so many people say, oh, great, you're going to want me to stop drinking my coffee and my wine, I'm going to have to do yoga, I'm going to have to own in the corner, and I'm going to have to be a vegetarian, I'm going to go to hug trees and eat granola and juice. Right. And no, 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 no. You can do those things if you want, but, you know, converting your lifestyle, and it has to be a lifestyle change, to using natural health and alternative medicine can be as simple as 
starting to use massage or stretching more or taking deep breaths, going to see acupuncturist or, you know, some really short meditations or visualizations or affirmations. And there's so many ways to easily incorporate this, this kind of stuff into your life. It doesn't have to be this radical change. Um, I just got back from Florida where I was speaking to groups of adult protective services workers. Mm -hmm. And I go through this list of things they should add and subtract for better health. And the list of things to subtract, it's, it's, you know, soda and milk and wheat, you know, all these things where I could just see these eyes starting to glaze over as they pick up their Diet Coke and start to drink it. Um, (laughs) And I told them, I said, I said, you know, I would love it if you guys walked out of here and never had another soda. I said, that would make me very happy because there's no reason to be drinking it. I said, however... I totally understand that we enjoy certain things and there's certain things we're not ready to release yet. Mm -hmm. Be gentle with yourself. The same way you're gentle with those elderly people whose homes you go into to help with the fraud, the abuse, you're gentle with them. Be gentle with yourself. Uh, And I think we, we sometimes forget to do that. We're so hard on ourselves if we think we've, quote, failed. And it's important to know it's a process and it's a lifetime process. And um, we have to just, you know, let it go slowly. I love this because I, I, I do, I think it's a great way for us to shift into natural medicine and talk about that. But, you know, I like how you say be gentle with yourself and, and, you know, you see the, you're doing this talk and you see the people reach for their diet soda. And I always tell people, you know, I know you have your soda or you like your coffee or whatever the case may be. You know, if you, if you have this real need to have a soda, how about just start incorporating, you know, something like, not drinking the Coke, but maybe switch into a 7-Up or a Sprite, you know, and, and then gradually tapering down off of that. But what happens is people start, they start to beat themselves up because they have these unrealistic expectations. You know, I, I want to just quit cold turkey and not have any soda. That's not a realistic expectation if you've been drinking right. soda for 40 years. You know, sure. and then they do it, they quit, and then they, 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 you know, slip and they stumble and they have a challenge and they reach for that Pepsi or whatever, and then they're back off the bandwagon, and then they feel really bad because they feel they failed. And it's like, right. oh, it's just a challenge that you need to get over. You know, sometimes we stray to the left, but we always seem to somehow get back on the path that we're supposed to be. So don't beat yourself up. And the other thing I see people do this with is – um you know, the new, new Year's resolutions where they're going to the gym and they're going every day, and then by March, they're not going. And it's like, right. you know, maybe you're doing just a little bit too much and putting too much on yourself, and you have this huge expectation, but then things come up and you don't go, and then you just say, well, I haven't gone for three days. I'm just going to stop going. And you sure. beat yourself up, and so you're in this never-ending cycle. And with natural medicine, it doesn't have to be the all or nothing. It's just the consistency of doing a little bit each day. Absolutely. And it can be a gradual change. And that's what I don't like about New Year's resolutions. I had so many clients who said, oh, do you have a New Year's resolution? And I said, no, if there's something I want to change, I might do it in June <laughs> or November. I'm not going to wait. Oh, no, I really want to quit crack, but I better wait till January. You know, I mean, it's like I'm going to I'm gonna do it as I, as I realize I need to do it. I don't smoke crack. Um, just to clarify that. Yeah, clarify that. I make jokes like that, and I have people look at me like, what now? <laughs> so I better clarify that. I don't smoke crack. Um <laughs> the heroin, the heroin is going to kill me, but the crack is no. Um, Love you. But it's like you know, it, it has to be gentle. And for people that do this radical, um, you know, try to do this overnight change. And believe me, I know people that have quit smoking cold turkey, and they can do it, and that works for them. That's not the norm. That's the exception. Yeah. Um, you know, and I'll sit down with people and do a health consult, which I can also do over the phone and via Skype. And and you know, thank God for this technology we have. But I'll sit down with people and and they'll say, you know, I say, what's your exercise? And they go, eh, you know, I walk like twice a week for half an hour. Great. They have found a way to consistently work in walking twice a week for half an hour. That's awesome. Okay. Is there a third day you could add? Or is there a way to up it to 40 minutes those two days? Right. You know, it's about gradually working in what you can do. And, you know, I can sit down with people and say, okay, this is what you need to do, and hand them the piece of paper. They're not going to do it. Right. And I think one of the other things that's really important is if you're working with a, a doc, you know, a regular Western medicine practitioner or someone like myself or an acupuncturist or an Ayurvedic practitioner, whatever it is, if they tell you that they advise you to do something, rather than just going, yes, 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 if there's something you know you're not going to do, please just tell us. Yeah. Um, I was working with my acupuncturist, and we were, I don't even remember why I was seeing her, but we we're going over all this stuff, and she's, okay, I, you know, I'd like to see you, you know, do this herb twice a day. Okay, cool. I'd like to see you come in once every two weeks for some needling. Okay, awesome. Um, I don't think you should be drinking so many cold beverages. Stop drinking your iced tea. Mm-hmm. And I said, no. And she said, I'm sorry, what? 
And I said, I know I'm not going to stop doing that because iced tea is my beverage of choice. Mm -hmm. I like really cold beverages. I do not like warm or room temperature or hot drinks. Mm -hmm. I said, I know I'm going to have my iced tea, and I know I'm going to have it for breakfast and lunch and all day long in between, and I'm not going to stop. And she looked stunned. But then she said, thank you so much for telling me that. Because if I assume you're doing everything I've told you to do, it's going to be a very different protocol than if I know you're not going to stop the IC. Right. And I told her, I said, look, to me, life is an 80-20 balance. You do the best you can 80% of the time. Mm-hmm. And I see so many people get on these radical diets, these radical lifestyle changes, and it's very hard to sustain. They beat themselves up when they fail, like we already talked quote, fail, like we already mm-hmm. talked about. But to me, you know, if I'm traveling, I just got back from Florida. I'm driving down the road. I had a half an hour before I had to be at my location, every place I passed to eat was fast food. Right. Every place I passed. Now, here are my choices. Don't eat, because that's not an option for me. Mm-hmm. You don't want to see me if I have not eaten. Um, <laughs> or go to a fast food place and do the best I can. Right. I picked Wendy's, because I know they have really good iced tea. <laughs> <laughs> That does seem to drive its, you know, okay, maybe it's not the crack, but I do have clearly an IC problem. Uh, I've got one right now. Uh, but naturally sweetened, it's good, it's, you know, tea's healthy for you. But anyway, so I go to Wendy's and I'm looking at this giant, you know, illuminated picture of this hamburger with all the, I don't know their quality of meat. I tend to not eat hamburger like that. So I went with a grilled chicken sandwich and a salad. Now, could I have gotten the Frosty and the Coke and the hamburger and the cheese? Yeah, I could have. But I made the best choice I could for the environment I was in and the situation I had. Did I beat myself up for going to Wendy's? No. I still did the best I could. Um, so I think that's what we have to remember to do is sometimes we are traveling or we're at the airport and your choice is, you know, McDonald's, Burger King, Taco Bell. Right. You have to make the best choices you can and not be mean to yourself about it. That's so important. And be honest with your practitioners. I love that. I love, oh, I, oh, I love, love, love that part where you say be honest with your practitioners because you guys out there for us that are, are here to help you to be and feel the best that you can be. It's a, it's a two way street or, you know, it's a mutually mm-hmm. beneficial relationship. We can't help you to be the best that you can be if you're not upfront and honest with you, with us. And I like how she said, if you have something that you know you're not going to stop doing, It's okay to tell your practitioner that because they can cater your Mm -hmm. particular program or care plan that's going to incorporate what you know you can't do or what you know you're not going to stop doing, but incorporate other things to help you be and feel better. But they have, it's like having the whole recipe in front of you and being able to work with it versus having bits and pieces like, oh, I didn't know I needed baking soda or I didn't know I needed you know, a little honey or whatever the case may be. That's why it's not, you know, that's why what I'm making is not sticky. It's all hard, hard and dry. It has it's no taste because it's not the perfect plan for the recipe to help, you know, to help it to be successful. So I really like that. And I thank you for pointing that out. And you guys out there listening, you if you would if, if you go to a um you know a alternative health medicine person or a western medicine physician whatever it is always be upfront with your physician because or person you're seeing for your healthcare because that's the best way that they can be able to take the best care of you when they know and have all the cards laid out in front of them now tell me what do you think about you know, there's this big push, and I and I, I do. I'm, you know, I'm a herbologist, and I have an herbal medicine dispensary and all that. But what do you think about supplements, and and do you think we really need them? Yeah, absolutely. That is that is one of the things on my add and subtract list when I talk about that. We should all be taking a multivitamin and mineral. Our soils are depleted. We're surrounded by environmental stressors and food stress and air stress and water stress and and emotional stress and you know, all these things we can't control. We are just not getting enough nutrients. And I hear so many people say, oh, well, I eat organic. You've got to eat a lot of food to get to the nutrient levels that we were getting even 20 years ago. We're just not getting it, um, especially if you're doing a lot of fast food, if you're eating a lot of packaged and processed food. We just we need to be supplementing. And I say high-quality vitamin and mineral supplement. If you can get a... 600 day supply for a buck 99 at your big box store it's not a high quality right. <laughs> um a lot of supplements are are yes 
repeat that one more time. That's very important because, you know, a lot of a lot of people go to Walmart and they get that yep. thousand container worth of vitamins and think they're doing their body good. So repeat that. No. again. Yeah. If you can get a, a gigantic jug of it for a buck ninety nine, it is not good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I also prefer that people get their vitamins from companies that specialize in vitamins. So if you're getting a store brand where they're also making dog food, toilet paper, tampons, and charcoal <laughs> and vitamins, um, you know, I'm sure they're lovely and I'm sure they have some guy in a room that specializes in vitamins, but go to a company that really does nutraceuticals, right. that really has a good formula, that knows what they're doing. Um, and most vitamins are synthetic. And the way they make those is oftentimes byproducts of other things. Mm -hmm. So B vitamins are very often coal tar. And C vitamin is very often high fructose corn syrup. And a lot of that's genetically modified. And, you know, we want to get, if we can, a an organic source from whole food products which is, you know, that's how we're used to taking our vitamins. And right. there's a couple liquid vitamins, um, things like Standard Process, do some really nice organic food-sourced vitamins, the best quality you can get. I'm not a huge fan of some of the major brands that you see advertised. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, people, we are adults. We do not need gummy vitamins, okay? You can swallow <laughs> pills. You can do it. Or right. get a liquid. We don't need a gummy bear vitamin as an adult. And right. frankly, the gummy bear vitamins for kids, I don't think are really good either. Um, and, and let's talk about minerals. I mean, we hear so much about calcium, 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 calcium. We are so much more than calcium. And if you're taking a multivitamin that has some minerals in it too, you're not getting enough minerals. Minerals have really large molecules. Right. So if you look at your multivitamin that may have minerals, especially if you're doing like a one-a-day kind of thing, it doesn't have a lot of minerals in it. Um, and, and, and personally, I think the RDA for stuff is too low anyway. That's my opinion. I'm not a doctor. That's just my opinion. Um, so getting a min multi-mineral supplement is, is good as well. Um, magnesium is my favorite mineral because I'm nerdy enough to have a favorite mineral. Uh, mine's <laughs> magnesium. <laughs> I tell people I have a favorite mineral, and they're like, uh-huh. Like, okay. um, <laughs> magnesium. But let me tell you why, and it'll be your favorite too. It's good for muscle cramps, menstrual cramps, headaches, Mood issues, sleep issues, constipation. Okay. okay, anybody not having one of those problems? And doesn't that sound remarkably like PMS? Oh, totally. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> and what is high in magnesium? Chocolate. Mm. So when we're craving chocolate before our periods, we want magnesium. Well, I mean, we want the chocolate, but right. we want the magnesium. But, too. but we're really That's craving why. the magnesium, but, you know, the chocolate yeah. is nice, a nice way to have it delivered to us. <laughs> exactly. But you want to have good, you want good quality chocolate. You don't want to grab a handful of, you know. Hershey's. Yeah, M&M's or something like that. Right. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, we want to get a multi-mineral. We need zinc and copper and molybdenum and magnesium and manganese and, you know, all these other things that we're not maybe getting in our food, again, especially if we're stressed out. Um, so I definitely recommend people supplement. And the highest quality vitamin, the better. Um, I just think we need it. And, and even Harvard went on record of saying the best insurance policy we can have in this country is to take a high-quality vitamin. I like that. And, and you guys listening out there, you know, she emphasized some really good points in, in all that she said. But specifically, I want you to pay attention to one of the things that she said with regards to our food. You know, our food is grown in the ground, but we have a lot of genetically modified things out there that we don't even know they're genetically modified. I mean, corn... You know, you have white corn, um, sweet corn, all these different type of corns. They're all genetically modified from the original corn plant. Um, and then our soil has been depleted. It's depleted of the minerals and, and vitamins that we once got naturally when we ate our plant-based diets. So, you know, it's okay to have supplements and add these supplements into your diet, um, which is going to help you. But, again, the point really is bringing home is, you know, get high-quality minerals and vit vitamins and minerals don't you know don't settle for the big box stuff because it's cheap and then you think you're putting something good into your body because you never know where that may be coming from how it was manufactured what type of conditions it was manufactured <laughs> under you know right. if it's contaminated or not those are, those are things we never never know about until there's a big problem and then we hear about this recall or whatever you know that's going on mm -hmm. people dying from things they're ingesting because they're not made in the most um cohesive or you know healthy environment. So again, pay attention to what she's saying here, not just the fact of having the supplements, but also pay attention to where your food is coming from. And and it's perfect because I want to move into, you know, there's this book, big push about uh, eating organic. And mm -hmm. there's all different kind of 
versions of organic. You know what I'm saying? I'm where I'm going with this. You know, people say, oh, it's organically grown. But, yeah, it's next to an antenna field that is being grown in. To me, that's, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. um, can you just just educate us about does organic food really make a difference in in our bodies and in our lives? Yeah, it absolutely does. And I hear um I hear so many people say, "Oh, well, I can't afford organic and it's or it's so much more expensive." If you can't afford organic across the board, here's when you really should get it. If you're buying packaged products, if you're buying chips, if you're buying um, you know, types of things that you're finding on those inner supermarket aisles, if you can do your packaged and processed foods, which you shouldn't be eating anyway, but if you are, um do those organic. Why? Because the major components that go into that packaged food, which is corn syrup and corn solids, soy proteins, cottonseed oil, all that stuff has been genetically modified. Those are the top three GMO crops, corn, soy, and cotton. Um, and it's not so much the corn we're getting at the barbecue, it's the corn used in high fructose corn syrup and packaged processed foods. Right. So if you can switch those to organic, you're going to be better off. The other thing is with our fruits and vegetables. There's not a lot of those that are GMO at this point. But if they're conventionally grown, they're being exposed to herbicides, pesticides, fungicides. Um, because we're so highly spraying our crops, um, a lot of our produce is really contaminated. So if it's something that has delicate leaves, if it's something where you eat the entire product, it's best to get it organic. So do you need to get organic bananas? Eh, not as much because you've got a thick skin. Do you need to get organic avocados? Eh, not as much there's a thick skin. Potatoes, green peppers, grapes, um, spinach, things that you're eating the entire plant that are harder to wash, those you want to really focus on organic. Um, there's a list, if you Google the Dirty Dozen, there's a list of the top 12 most contaminated foods as far as pesticides and herbicides and fungicides go. Um, that list varies slightly every so often, but there's really 12 that you want to be aware of. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a really, really phenomenal source. I love this organization um, called TrueFoodNow.org. Uh -huh. It's the True Food Network. I love them. They do such great stuff. They actually helped me out with a couple um, questions I had on my TV show because I wanted to make sure I had my facts right. right. Um, they have a listing on their website, and they can actually, if you donate to them, which I do a lot because I, I really feel strongly about our food safety, um, they send you a little um, like purse size pamphlet of what has been genetically modified and they tell you products in the mainstream grocery stores by brand that are GMO versus non-GMO. Oh. There's a lot of things like baby formula and stuff you don't even think about that's been genetically modified. They talk about MSG on there. They talk. It's a really great resource. They have a whole site of what is trying to get through the pipeline of GMO and what's not. Um, I am not pro-GMO, obviously. I think it's really dangerous. I don't. Yeah. yeah, some people think, oh, we're feeding the world. I'm like, yeah, wh where are you reading that, Monsanto's, right. you know, uh, mission statement. Um, we're not feeding the world with it. In fact, most countries have either banned GMO or at least require it to be labeled. Right. We haven't. Um, so knowing what you're what you're consuming, to me, that knowledge is power. There are times I wish I didn't know as much and I could just go grab a thing of food and not know what it's in it, what's in it, what's, what it's doing to me. But once you know that, it's harder to make bad choices. Um, love it, love it. Can you just repeat those um, the Dirty Dozen site again and the True Food Now? For the listeners, yeah, I, because I want you guys out there listening, check this out. Please, if you don't do anything else this week with regards to your health and wellness, go check out one of these two sites or both of them. Just spend a minute, 30 seconds, but just allow the information on there to get into your mind. I guarantee you the next time you go to the grocery store, you're going to think about things a little bit differently. Yeah, I think it's just, I'm actually looking at it to make sure. Yeah, it's truefoodnow.org. So it's all one big, you know, three three words, all one big word, truefoodnow.org. And it comes from the Center for Food Safety. Um, what's on their cover right now is about um, insecticide use and how all our bees are being killed. Uh -huh. But they have um, farm bills. They're really active in making sure we don't have uh, GMO food, and they're, they're trying to protect us and keep a lot of these laws passed. There's also an app you can use. I have an app on my phone that has grocery store lists and stuff in it so that you can see what, you know, you can look up the product you're buying and 
tell if it's contaminated or not. So yeah, it's really, really good stuff. I really like what they what they have to offer and they do good work. That information right there, you guys, is golden. That is some golden information for you. And um like I said, I'm I know I'm kinda of beating a dead horse over the head, but it's really important you know that what you're putting into your body and the food, you know, what kind of food you're getting and all that kind of stuff. It really, really is important because you know, that's how you build the cells and the tissues in your body is by what you take in. And if you're not taking in the best stuff, then guess what? You're not building the best cells and tissue that you could possibly build. And that yep. could be potentially why you're not feeling as vital as you think you should or you're having challenges with regards to your health and wellness. Take a look at what you're eating and take a look at what you're putting in. Sometimes thinking what you're doing is good is not necessarily good until you're educated about the real truth behind our food and, and what's going on. So thank you, Kathy, for that one. I I'm, mm-hmm. love it. Now, um, you know, you talk a lot about mind-body medicine because I know that's your discipline and, and that's, you know, that's your forte. That's what you're good at. That's what you want to – that's your passion. That's what you want to bring to the forefront in everyone's mind. Tell us a little bit about mind-body medicine and how um, it's so important to our healing and our, and, and our wellness. Yeah, I, I will tell you that by way of telling you how I even discovered the connection. Um, I was working on a client who was having wrist pain, and I do medical massage, so I work with people with specific injuries or stress problems. Um, and she kept coming back every week, and I would work on her forearms, and I was addressing the problem, and the pain would go away. But inevitably, by the end of the week, it would be back full force. It was not, I was not affecting any lasting change. It was driving me crazy. Right. I was new in my practice, and I was taking um, un, uh, I was very, I was taking it personally that I wasn't able to help her fully. So she was laying on my table, and I was working on her arms again, and I said, you know, tell me again when this hurts you. I said, because I feel like I'm missing something. I thought maybe there was some small muscle or something that I was, was ignoring. And she said, well, it hurts when I'm gripping things. I have trouble grasping at stuff. So, like, if I'm holding my hair dryer to do my hair, I can't do that. She said, I can't lift up my wine glass. And I thought that was a huge problem, so I figured we had to fix it, too. <laughs> um, you know, if you can't get the wine, that's, that's a bad that's Yeah, a bad that's, that's got to fix that. Got to fix that. Uh, so, But I listened to her words, and she said the words grab and grasp. And so I looked at her, and I said, well, is there something that you're gripping too tightly is there something that you need to let go? And I opened up my hand. And she opened up her eyes and she looked at me and she said, I don't want to let my kids go. And I'm like, what? I was stunned. I was stunned that she had an answer at all. I was really stunned she had one that was so profound. And she went on to explain to me that when she was a young kid, her brother, who turned 16, had just gotten his driver's license. He went out to go somewhere, was hit by a drunk driver and killed. Mm. And it ripped the family apart. And so now she's married, she has kids, one's about to be 16, one's about to be 15, and they wanted their freedom, and she was completely freaking out. Right. She didn't want to let her kids go. And I said, well, have you told them this? And she said, no, they know I lost my brother, but I never really told them how and why. And I said, you know, I would talk to them about this. So she sat down with her family that night and through a lot of tears, and her husband had known the story but didn't connect. That's why she was so overprotective. Mm-hmm. Um, told her told her kids what happened and why she was so, um, you know, come here, come here, come here. And they all had a good cry. And the next time I saw her, I worked on her arms, and it lasted a little bit longer. Oh. And then it lasted a little bit longer until finally I was seeing her once a month for maintenance, and then she dropped off because she didn't need to come back. That's how I want to lose clients. Right. And I fully, I fully believe that had we not addressed that emotional issue of her gripping so tightly to her kids, that her arms would have continued to hurt. Right. And I talk about that. I have example after example, even from my own family and my own life, of how I see these emotional issues contributing to what's happening in our body. And I would never, ever say we're causing our own disease. I've heard doctors expound how people are causing their own cancer. That mm-hmm. to me is one of the most offensive things ever. We are not causing our own disease. We are having a combination of things, whether it's emotional, spiritual, physical, environmental. Sometimes it's just crappy bad luck. Mm-hmm. But if the emotional component of it, if our thoughts and our words are even 10% contributing, and we can change that, why would we not want to do that? Right. 
So one of the things I see when I'm working with my clients is I'll listen to the words they say. Um, and we even have, you know, all these phrases. And I, I actually listed all the phrases in my new book because I came up with like 80 of them. Mm-hmm. My, heart is, my heart is breaking. My heart is aching. My heart is open. You're getting under my skin. I can't stomach this. Afraid to take the next step. The way the world's on my shoulders. I'm shouldering the burden. I feel stabbed in the back. He's mm-hmm. spineless. He, I mean, we, we have all these phrases, um, and I see a connection between the emotional state and the body part. And Louise Hay did this decades ago. This is not a new idea. Carolyn Mace talks about it. Our biology, no, our biography becomes our biology. Mm-hmm. These people were the pioneers of this, and I grabbed onto it and wanted to take it further. And I'm hoping I'm, that's what I'm doing. Um, I studied mind-body medicine at Harvard last year with Herbert Benson, who is a rock star to me. I mean, I like rushed up after the lecture and had him <laughs> find my book. You know, and there's all these, these MDs in the room kind of going, why is she talking to Benson? I mean, because to right. them it's just, oh, he's another doctor. And I'm like, no, 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 no. The man is brilliant. You know, I'm, uh, he gets I'm, it. He gets he, it. He does. Yeah. And I'm I'm nerdy enough to have a favorite mineral, and I'm a big fan of researchers. <laughs> so it's like they're just they're the the rock stars to me. But you know that's I mean you when you're people like us and we get the mind body connection. I mean I can I can tell stories about um, you know like you instances with my clients or instances within my family where I've seen things manifest and mm-hmm. you know sometimes working the family is is really really hard you know but. Yep. But, you know, when you come across people that are, you know, on the cutting edge, um, like, you know, back in, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to date myself, but, you know, back in the 80s when I was listening to Louise Hay and, you know, you you know, it was just, it was something that drew what she was saying to me and it resonated with me, within me in a nice, loving, joyful, vibratory you know, energy, right? So when you yeah. go to a lecture or you go to something and you have this physician and they get it and they're 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 into mind body, you know, connection, they understand the process. They're not they don't discount it as it's like something way out there, woo woo woo, because it's not the scientific blah 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 blah. You know right. it, it, you you're compelled. You're you want to rush up to them and say, you know what, I want to hug you because you get it. Mm-hmm. And you are yep. on a, such a higher platform than me and you get it. You get it. And yep. I get you get it. And I like that you got it because I got it too. Mm-hmm. And so yep. it's just um it's it's just a fabulous, fabulous way uh for us to, you know, even deepen our connection to the mind body medicine and, and allow us to really tap into more and open our open up ourselves for more so that we can heal those that come to us and lose clients not because they're unsatisfied with what's going on but but because they've been healed and they no longer need us and yeah. that is beautiful i love that and i love and, how and you said that yeah, and i see so much of it and observing you know what's happening with people around me and taking stock of everything of body, mind, and spirit. And what's really cool is you just said, you know, oh, it's all woo, woo, woo and out there. And, you know, it's not anymore. Harvard has a mind, body, medicine department. I mean, it's, it, when I went there, it was not last year anymore, now two years ago, I went in, in 2011, uh, you know, I'm in a room full of MDs, See? medical Western medicine doctors, and they're listening to all this stuff. And at the end of the week, which was the most exhausting, enlightening, phenomenal week ever, um, they went around and they asked if anyone had anything to say. And so many doctors said, I'm taking this info and I'm taking it back to my office, back to my clinic, back to my hospital, back to my, and I'm making changes. There is so much research, and I did my dissertation on mind-body medicine, so I found all of these studies on everything from visualization, meditation, prayer, affirmations, positive thought. The research is out there, and we can speed wound healing. We can speed bone growth. We can speed things with our thoughts and our minds and our concentration. We're daydreaming all day. Right. They estimate that we have like 60,000 thoughts a day and 50,000 of those are negative. (laughs) What are we creating? Because our brains can't tell the difference between what we're fantasizing about and what's really happening. So those negative stories we get ourselves into, those negative dramas we're, we're replaying over and over in our heads, maybe it's something that happened 10 years ago we keep thinking about or something that we're worried about tomorrow, that meeting with the boss, that first date, that come see me in my office. Why are you going to ruminate all day about if that's bad? 
because you're just creating stress in your body. You you thinking about it is not going to change the outcome of what this this man or woman's about to say to you. Right. But right. why do you want to have eight hours of stress and illness about it? We're in that way we're creating illness because we're creating this negative place in our bodies and that stress response depletes our immune system. It can contribute to our illness and we have to make better mind choices, not just better body choices. And we forget about that in this society. Yeah, I I really, really agree with that. You know, there's times, and I remember doing this when I was young, really worrying about stuff because it was unforeseen. And I'm worrying about the, you know, what's going to happen and, you know, this and that. And so I was the type of person that when I worried, I wouldn't eat, you know, my digest, yeah. I just couldn't eat. And so mm-hmm. it's like, okay, you think about it, you're worried about something that you may never, ever happen, and then you're depriving yourself of nourishing the nourishment that you need to sustain you through the stress that you're worried about, whatever, right? And it was right. this, this never-ending, you know, never-ending cycle. I'm so glad that I, you know, at a young age discovered that that was happening to me and was able to make a change. <coughs> Excuse me. For the better, because, you know, you're going to have things that come up. And, yep. you know, my my thing is I can't worry about it right now because, you know, what I may worry about, of course, I'm going to worry the negative, right? You're just going to pick the negative and worry oh, sure. it's going to expand. I don't know why we never pick the positive and worry about that mm-hmm. happening, right? But you pick the negative. Right. You grab onto that, you, you you hold on to it, and then you have all this stuff happen, and then you're wondering, well, dang, why, I wonder why this happened. But if you can change your thought process and really in the context of any negative situation or challenge that you may be having, think of the positive aspect. Okay, I'm in this situation. I'm really pissed or whatever, but I'm able to recognize the fact that I'm really pissed. That's a positive, right. you know, and you can make the necessary changes to have more positivity come into your life. So I love, love, love that. Now, can you tell us <clears> – <throat> Because we're on the lines of mind, body, body medicine and how thinking in connect, you know, how our thoughts connect with what happens and occurs in our body. Can you tell us how important is self-talk and healing? Because I think that's a really big one. I know people out there are suffering from a lot of different, you know, medical challenges and they get down on themselves and they get depressed and things of that nature. Can you just tap on the importance um, of self-talk and healing ourselves? Yeah, absolutely. And like I said before, we have, they estimate, about 60,000 thoughts a day. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's astronomical. I can't even, and how do you count that? <laughs> but, um, but if truly 50,000 of those are negative, that's 80%. Um, to me, that's 80% negative results. Right. And it does us no good to focus on the negative um, because where is the stress? It's not right this second. It's either behind us or it's ahead of us. It's pretty rare that the stress is actually right this moment. Um and if we can change those negative thoughts to positive ones, we're going to just be healthier in general. We're not going to have that stress response, which we can put ourselves into easily. Stress is not some outside force. It's our perception of that outside force. It's what the, the thoughts and the images we create around it. So it's really hard when people say, oh, we'll just stop thinking that. Yeah, okay, that's easier said than done. Yeah. This, is where, this is where I like affirmations. Because just like that physics axiom we learned in ninth grade of no two solid objects can occupy the same space at the same time, we can't put two golf balls in the same space. It just doesn't happen. Um, Our thoughts can't occupy the same space at the same time. We can't have more than one thought. So if we're having negative ones, rather than trying to erase them, which is so hard for most people, um, just replace it. So I'm I'm on Facebook and I promote things and I put little health tips and blah, blah, blah. And inevitably I see one of my friends post on their wall that day, I'm not getting sick. I'm not getting sick. I'm not, I can't get sick. I'm not getting sick. And I always type in, rather than saying that, why don't you say, I am healthy and well, my immune system is strong and resilient. And they always put back the little, you know, smiley face icon. <laughs> and I don't know if they listen, and I don't know if they, or, oh, I really like that, or, you know, whatever they say. But inevitably, I see them a couple of days later posting that same thing on their friends. <laughs> so this is the joy of social media, and I remember that commercial, I'll date myself, and they tell someone, and they tell someone, and so on, and so yes. on, and so on. <laughs> yes. That's the joy of this social media. And to me, rephrasing, and not just to me, but research shows, rephrasing that. And activating your immune system with things like affirmations, visualization, it actually makes a difference. The stress response makes us sick. Mm -hmm. It depletes our immune system. At first, we have a boost of immune system. 
after that, it gets weaker and weaker and weaker. And I say to people, you know, when do we finally have time to get sick? The second day of our vacation. Mm-hmm. When we're relaxed for just a moment and our bodies go, oh, thank God, I can take a break. Mm-hmm. And the immune system drops and we get sick. We get food poisoning, which if our immune system was strong, we might not have gotten. We get a flu, we get a cold, we get an al- you know, whatever it is. Right. Um, so many of my clients say that. I say, how was your vacation? Oh, we were sick the whole time. You know, of course you were <laughs> because you yeah. were so stressed before you left. Yeah. So changing those thoughts. And to me, um, sleep is one of the most important things. And mm-hmm. so many people don't get a good night's sleep because they're up ruminating about things. It's mm-hmm. not a time to think. It's a time to rejuvenate your body. So rather than laying there in bed and worrying about something, you have two choices. Either shut up and go to sleep, frankly, or get up and do something about it. If it's right. something you can check on right then, go get up and do something about it. Go see if you paid the mortgage. Go see if that email came through. This stuff you can look at. If it's stuff you can't do right then, do a brain dump. Write it on a piece of paper. Promise yourself you'll do it tomorrow when the bank is open and you can actually call, not at mm. 2 a.m. And then do an affirmation. And I really like, I fall asleep quickly and easily. I wake up feeling refreshed. Because it does one of two things. It either actually programs us to fall asleep quickly and easily and wake up feeling refreshed. Mm-hmm. At the very least, at the very least, it shuts off those other negative thoughts. And when I do that affirmation, I don't even know how many times it takes an out. And I wake up the next morning refreshed. I feel good. I slept the night through. And I wasn't up worrying half the night about something I can't control at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, I love that affirmation. I love it that. It distracts you. Repeat that again because I, I, I totally believe in affirmation. So repeat that again. I fall asleep quickly and easily. I wake up feeling refreshed. That's beautiful, you guys. Um, and it's perfect how, you know, this we're, we're moving into, um, you know, discussing self-talk and then the use of affirmations and visualizations. Because when I was um, a practicing nurse, I should say I still practice, but when I was working in the emergency room, you know, there were times that, you know, people, you come across all kind of stuff, all kind of mm-hmm. stuff. And um, people wonder, well, why, why don't you ever get sick? And I said, because I'm healthy and well, and, and sickness, sickness and disease can't reside in my body. I don't, I won't allow it. And so they would look at me like I was crazy, you know, or yep. how come you're not getting a flu shot? Because I'm not going to get mm. the flu. Okay. Mm. And that's a whole nother, we can do a whole nother show about that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I'm not going to get the flu. And here they are getting a flu shot and they're getting sick. And here I am not getting the flu shot. Yep. You know, the one that's quote unquote unprotected. And I'm walking yep. around healthy and well. And so I truly believe in the power of our mind and what you what you put in your mind, what you set forth, and what you affirm yep. will definitely manifest in your life for the good. And I got into affirmations, you know, I was saying in the 80s. I'm dating myself, <laughs> but in the 80s, we must be the same age, in the 80s because <laughs> – Hey, and people thought, you know, I was always this kid that kind of just walked to a different beat, but they worked for me. Or I didn't, you yep. know, or let me say, I may not even know that they worked for me, but I felt good saying them and doing them. And I felt real yep. confident about what I was saying and how to create them. So I love that we got into talking about affirmations and visualization. Can you can you just tell the audience, and oh God, we're coming up on our time, but can you just tell the audience about utilizing um, visualization, because some people may not really know what visualization, you know, what we mean when we say that with regards to our health and wellness. Sure. Um, I learned to visualize because I was doing a summer stock production of Oklahoma, and I was starting to get sick. My throat was starting to hurt. I was really nervous about that. We're opening the next week. I had to sing, and I didn't want to be sick for my like very first, you know, uh, in public performance. Right. And a, uh, there was an Asian man in the cast, and he said, "Well, do you ever visualize?" And I'm thinking, "Dude, I'm 15. Yeah, really?" <laughs> um, but I realized that I actually was a visualizer, and he explained to me. He said, "Have you ever seen those movies where the cavalry comes rushing over the hill to save the day, and all the horses are?" And I said, "Oh yeah, of course. That's a you know an image we all are all familiar with." Yeah. And he said, "Okay, those are your white blood cells." He said, "So tonight, when you're laying in bed, picture a place behind your heart, which is the thymus that produces your T cells, which is part of the immune system. Uh-huh. Picture those white blood cells rushing towards your throat. They are the cavalry coming over the hill, and they are flooding the area with white light, and they are killing the invaders, or eating the invaders, or carrying off the invaders. Whatever visual, you know, whatever image works for you, and you won't get sick." 
And I thought, okay. So I went home that night and I visualized, I have an imagination, I'm an only child. So I had, they were in little uniforms and oh man, I had it, I had it down. Um, and I woke up the next morning and I had no sore throat and I never got sick. And I have done that to heal a cracked vertebrae I had. I have done that to uh, boost my immune system. Visualizing boosting your immune system actually works. They have done studies on this. So visualizing the white blood cells, maybe you have a broken bone. Visualizing, um, and I have, this always sounds crazy when I say it, but it makes perfect sense to me. I have a little construction worker that lives in my body. <laughs> I and see him. He looks like, like Bob the Builder. <laughs> It totally, it's exactly what I was like, yeah. It's a little, it looks like a kind of Super Mario Brothers kind of guy, so again, I'm dating myself. And he's got a little hard hat and his little tool belt and, you know, his little boots, and he walks around my body and sticks his stuff. Yeah. And if I have an injury, if I have uh, the couple times I've had surgery, I put him on it. And I call him up and I go, hey, we got a problem at da 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 And I visualize him, you know, walking over there with his little tool chest, his little tool belt, and caulking the, you know, putting caulking on the bone that's cracked or, um, you know, scraping stuff off the wood, whatever it is. He, I have to have this, ima- this, this vivid imagination because that's just the way I, I operate. But we all have that. We all daydream. We've all gone, you know, four exits past where we're supposed to be on the freeway because we go, oh, crap, what was I thinking about? <laughs> we're lost in our thoughts. Right. It is transcendent. We are transcending time and space at that time. And we can fix things in our body. Um, and we can visualize whether it's a tumor shrinking or a bone knitting. Um, there's lots of causes for illness. So I'm not going to say that if you visualize your tumor shrinking, it's going to shrink. (laughs) But what it does do for you is it brings healing, not necessarily curing. It brings healing. It brings um, control to you. It can bring peace of mind. And I've worked with patients who were terminal. They were dying. They weren't going to. They weren't going to have a cure at that moment. But they they left this this planet with healing and with a feeling that they were in control and they were visualizing beautiful things like angels swooping in and taking the pain away or the pain or the tumor as ice and it was melting and flowing into this beautiful stream. It gave them control and peace of mind. They still died, but they died differently. Um, And that's where visualization can work. And studies show it, it, it helps. It helps boost the immune system. So it can't be bad. No side effects. Oh, I love that. That and that, you know, I, that we're coming to the end of our time, and that's a fabulous way to end because, you know, all of you out there, if you have some kind of challenge, you know, with your health and wellness, just do what Dr. Kathy Groover has just said and visualize, you know, your little Bob the Builder inside of you, or whatever, or the cavalry, or whatever, you know, um, is, can be an anchor for you with regards to allowing the internal healing to take place within yourself. Um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful way. You can see it happening in your own mind and you can create whatever story you want with regards to allowing yourself to heal and be well and feel well. And so um, I just love it. And I think it's, that's a great way for us to, you know, wrap up. Now, Dr. Dr. Kathy Gruber, can you tell the audience how they can get more of you? Absolutely. The best place to find everything that I offer is on my website. It's thealternativemedicinecabinet.com. Um, both my books are there. My first book is just an overview of a lot of natural health things to incorporate. My new book is all on mind-body medicine, and it's written for other practitioners, but it's easy to understand for anybody. Just take the word practitioner out. You can read it yourself. Um, and it's all about stress and the stress response, affirmations, whole section on visualization, all of what we just talked about. Um, I have a monthly newsletter that goes out. Uh, I don't bug you with things, just one email a month. Um, and I'm going to be speaking on a cruise in September, which I am thrilled about. And Ooh. I'm going to be talking about all the stuff we just talked about, a week long to Alaska. So I'm thrilled about that. I have a massage DVD that teaches you how to do massage at home if you want to incorporate that into your life and your practice. But yeah, it's all there, thealternativemedicinecabinet.com. I've got my YouTube videos, uh, info about my TV show. It's all there. So head over there. And if I can be of any help, let me know. That's fabulous. Thank you so very much. It's been so fun talking to you. I I just, I just love your enthusiasm and your vibrancy and it just comes out with what you're saying and how we're communicating and we're having a good time actually. We are. Yeah, we're we having are. a really good time. We, we could do a whole nother show and I would <laughs> love to join you on that cruise just to, just to, you know, cruising. Hey, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's like the ultimate little 
dream trip, so to speak, um, that takes you away from the stresses of everyday life and puts you on a boat with fabulous people and yep. just allow you to relax and chill. So I love that. So you guys out there listening, if you want to get more or find out how you can reach out and touch Dr. Kathy Groover, who is awesome, please go to www dot the alternative medicine cabinet dot com. The link will be on the site for the show. Please go and touch her if you if you feel compelled, if she's warmed your heart, if she's got you thinking about affirmations or alternative medicine or the mind body connection or visualizations or you just want to know more about massage, please, please, please do not hesitate to contact her. She would love to hear from all of you. And so with that I would like to, again, thank Dr. Kathy Groover for being a guest on the show today. Um, you can learn about her at her website, and again, that will be posted on my my site. And thank you all for listening to Blissful Living. I really enjoyed our topic today. Can you tell I get so enthusiastic when I'm so synchronistically connected with someone? Um, it just it just I can't shut up, basically. <laughs> so it just beams. Um, but I want you to be sure to tune in uh, next week because we're going to have, or me, we, all my personalities, we're going to have another fabulous, fabulous guest that's going to bring it to you just like Dr. Groover did. May not bring it to you as hard and as vibrant as she did, but it'll be another fabulous guest for you to enjoy your hour of blissful living. And so I am Rochelle Lawson the queen of feeling fabulous. And as always, I wish peace to your mind, wellness to your body, and tranquility to your spirit. And until we meet again, you guys have a fabulous, fabulous rest of your week and your day, your day and your week. Take good care, everyone. You can find out more about Rochelle on her website, Rochelle Lawson, R-O-C-H-E-L-E, Lawson, L-A-W-S-O-N, or at healthhealingwellness.com. Or just click on her websites from the webtalkradio.net page right in front of you. And of course, you'll want to come right back here next week for another episode of Blissful Living. Thanks for joining us.